Right, welcome everyone. We are at the Abbey Gardens in Waltham, Waltham Abbey today, uh, part of the Sunflower Group Sensory Walk. And this is the fourth one uh, as part of our climate change project, which is sponsored by Let's Get Connected in Farlow. So we're very grateful for them for their support. Farlow. And today we're going to have a little wander around the gardens, have a little look at what we've got here, and afterwards we'll have a nice cup of coffee. Okay. Are you making it, John? Or? I'll be making the coffee. My dear Tristan. Any such comments like that are very welcome. Because we're making a little video while we're doing this. Ray's filming away. And uh, so a, a nice comment here and there is appreciated. So thank you for that, Linda. A nice comment. A nice comment. Uh, we're looking at a site of an old forge that was here sort of 500 years ago. And uh, what the history of the Abbey here is that uh, Henry VIII came along in 1540 mm. and took the Abbey down. Mm. So all we've got left now is the church. But the Abbey was very big and all the monks lived here. They made their sort of tools and things in this forge. Uh, so it was little ironworks for them to make things. They had fish ponds over the top there. Uh, they got the gardens, they've got the, a lot of the uh, they used to grow their own food? Yeah, they grew their own food. Yeah. So, and the fish, they grew in the fish ponds. Uh, so, it was quite a little productive place. And unfortunately, when Henry VIII dissolved the monastery, there were hundreds of monasteries in the country, uh, he destroyed some of our history because the manuscripts that the monks wrote were all lost. And uh, he basically sold off what he could in the monasteries and took the money about, though, and I think according to the books he gets about he got about a one and a half million pounds sure. for his own use yeah, it's all, about. It was all about the money and also because uh, he wanted to you know get married again and the Pope wouldn't allow that so he changed the status of the church and, and created the Church of England so that he could do all that and have his own way it was a bit of a boy, really. I don't know why. Mm. I don't know what it is, John, but the, I mean, I, mine used to be smothered. I've got it all the way yeah. up um, my part. Was this um, part of the original abbey and, no, and the garden? when the Lee Valley people took over Wharf Abbey when I was 12, this was a muddy field. Wow. And then I saw them come along with their bits of string and they made the as it is now. Yeah. So they did took, they consciously plant yeah, they did. smelly they, things? Yeah, they did, but they, these everything. took all them years to get nice. It's really nice and matured now. Yeah, it's and there's a covenant that if the roof on the abbey goes, people who live in the area have to pay towards it. Ah, right. Get no money out of <laughs> <laughs> what do you call this now, uh, Conrad? You I'm know a lot quite about sure this. what you call that, but they used to grow mustard and crest in there in the Victorian times. Is it a river or is it just a... No, they used to pump the water from the Lee Valley into these ponds um, and they use one or... I don't know if these are the ones for the carp or these are the ones that they grow the mustard and crest in. No, this is the mustard and crest. These are the mustard and crest one, isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, because the carp are the road further, up. further up. Yeah. They always get mixed up. Yeah, and you can come and in here and pick an apple or two. Well, you we used to do that. We used yeah. to walk all the way from the co-op farm here eating all the apples on the way down. See the bees on there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Real big guy. Another one up there. Yeah. The back there. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Friends coming. And what's it called? I think it's Echium. Echium. Yes, I'm yeah. not sure. Well, I'll tell you a good shot. I took one, I've got... Go in there. I, I had one at home. Have you in line this? Well, that's what looking at. Like. where it come up. Oh, oh, that's not... That's so I don't have my age. Yeah, look at this big Yeah, that's not... Oh, oh my God, oh, it's nice, isn't oh, it? Wow. Look at him. Yeah. Oh, Guys, come and have a look at this. Yeah, go have a look at this beetle. Come and have a look, mate. That's a fly. Fetch your camera. 
Yeah. It's a lovely colour, like turquoise. That's beautiful. Greenish colour. We've got the church in the background now. You can see it there. Uh, I don't know if you know, but the monastery, when it was in the 15, 1500s and prior to that, extended right out to here. So it was a huge building. And of course the monks lived in there and did whatever they did. And What did they do, Joe? I don't know what they did, oh, really. <laughs> but they got up to all sorts of things. They didn't have no play stations or anything. No, <laughs> Lucky them, but it's just interesting to know the size of it. Yeah. Um, Back some years ago, we did a human chain and everybody stood around and formed oh, yeah, a, a chain of people. And it was roughly around, you know, around to that tree there and right up to there. Uh, so, quite interesting, big building, what a loss to the Abbey, and to, to Waltham Abbey rather, because it, I'm sure it would be a fantastic tourist spot if that was there now. Yeah. At the back of the church here, and this is meant to be King Howell's tomb, the grave, so you know we've got the stone here with that on it. Uh, anybody know about King Howell? What can you tell me? He was the guy with the arrow in his eye. John 1066. Ten, yeah, 1066. Yeah. Ten Ian, you're right, it's 1066, Battle of Hastings. And uh, it's said that he was shot with an arrow in the eye, but um, apparently he was also cut to pieces. And, uh, his remains were said to be brought back here and buried. And this was no, would have been in the in the olden days. The church would have come right back, and that curved the uh, boundary line of where the church was. So this would have been inside the church. Um, but it's not anymore, obviously. Uh, so every year we have King Harold's Day in Waltham Abbey, and we celebrate uh, his life. And so it's not 100% sure that he's there, but. That's what, that's what history says. So um, there's also um, something called the Bayer Tapestry, which you probably heard about. And that was uh, kind of the history of the Battle of Hastings and life in those days. And it's a huge tapestry in France. Uh, and Waltham Abbey have recently just made a tapestry of their own about the history of Waltham Abbey. And you can see that at the museum at the moment. What museum? Oh, the one uh, the, down the, there? Of the, um, yeah. Waltham Abbey. Okay. Waltham yeah. Abbey Museum. We've been there before, haven't we? Like about yeah. a few years ago. We what did we? So yeah. quite interesting. Okay. Yeah, do that again, then, it took eight years to make this tapestry. This How many? Eight, eight years. Eight years. They had a team of embroidery people just stitching away and making the images and story of Waltham Abbey. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's great. Really good. It's not as big as the Bear Tapestry, which is massive. But, it, you know, they're panels, several panels. Uh, so you can see them at the museum. And another important thing about this ray was uh, the play that we put on, on Githa. Githa uh, was the daughter of King Harold, and she fled to the Ukraine after the Battle of Hastings. And she married a Russian prince. And we uh, did a reenactment of that a couple of years ago, before COVID. And we did. Uh, a play here, a live play, which was set around the earth and then it moved around the yeah. Abbey in different parts. Uh, yeah, I came to that. Did you come to that here? No, I did. What did you think of it? I think it was very good. Yeah, it was, it was really good. We had a nice crowd, good audience. And uh, I, how many times did we do that? Right? Two or three times? Four, I think. Four? Yeah, because we did, we did two in the forest as well, at High Beach. And they moved from location to location, and, and so each chapter was like a different location. Didn't we do a tapestry of that girl? Make something up? Yeah. The group? We made the Githa. Who? The, the, that was Githa. 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 The big Githa? tapestry. Githa. Githa. G Y T H A. Oh, Gith. 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 Yeah, Githa. Sorry. Yeah, you yeah. often find yew trees in churchyards. Yeah. Uh, Ray tells me that it was to ward off evil spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They are some of the oldest living trees in yeah. the country. Uh, there's one yew that's 3,000 years old somewhere in the country, I can't remember where. Um, but they, they get massive and they layer themselves so they can keep on growing. And if one bit dies, another bit's growing. Um, so um, they're lovely trees and the yew wood was always liked by carpenters and so on because it's such a beautiful wood. Also, interestingly, I was listening to a program the other day about the way trees communicate. 
and apparently uh, they've got layers under the ground, you know, like the fungi has got layers of fungi that talk, talk to one another, and the trees do a similar thing. So they can identify their own species and they can take in nutrients. So if one tree is ailing, it can be fed the nutrients. So it's a parent tree might feed a younger tree or one that's ailing. And uh, they've got this underground network of communication. And part of it has got um, the cells that we would have in our brains, the neuron cells. So there is a kind of brain, some form of brain attached to the trees communicating. <laughs> and they look after one another and if they know they're being attacked let's say um, caterpillars come along and attack a plant they can turn their leaves into something that tastes bitter so they can produce chemicals to try and put the caterpillars off and they can also warn the other trees around them what's happening so they can protect themselves as well same that, happens that, with plants as yeah, well. Yeah, like, and, and then, then that's right. Yeah. Cabbage yeah. plants and yeah. things like that. The trees are very yeah. good yeah. adapt. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look around, yeah. Yeah. the fact yeah. the trees have lived longer than yeah. us for yeah. millions of years and have been the bone of the planet, basically, they keep us alive, they give out oxygen. And from our climate, as part of our climate project, we've looked at trees and we've, we've realised how important they are, as everyone else does now. So it's very important. What well, they're more important now, aren't trees. they, John? Eh? They're more important now, aren't they? Because even we, more so, we ignored them, didn't yeah. we? Really. And also, you know, if we're standing in the shade here, it's always about ten degrees cooler. So you've got the protection of the tree. So so important. Well, to when we went up to High Beach, it was at least ten degrees cooler in the forest than it was outside. That's wasn't right. It? Yeah. Mm. yeah. It was baking outside the Bloody other day. Lovely, wasn't it? In that but forest. inside the forest, nice and cool. Oh, thanks for telling me that. I didn't yeah. actually know that. That's yeah. right. Something I've learnt today. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I heard through the grapevine that when you try to cut a tree or branch off the tree, you have to knock three times on it to let it know you're gonna. Well, I don't think he'll swear at you. I heard of that one, mate. Like no, like oh, that's a song, it. isn't it? Yeah. Not three if times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. that's where the song came from, I don't yeah. know. Maybe that is. Yeah. yeah. You know where we knock from. And there, there's lots yeah. of trees in yeah. songs. Tie a, tie a yellow Office. ribbon down an old oak tree. Yeah. Those kind of things. Yeah. And, and trees are symbols, aren't they? No, in the know. So we value them very much. Although I don't think a lot of people now with IT and everybody working in cities and so on, they get cut off from nature and uh, you know, they're missing out on what is very important We've to us. We've lost that connection. Yeah. And that was something I'd heard, I was talking with John, that, that um, yew trees were, I read somewhere, that they're often planted in graveyards, partly because they live for such a long time and also because they've got such a big root system that in sort of pagan art, they, they're reaching out to the dead, all the graveyards, which was sort of, it figures in a way, yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, up on the wall there, we've got the carving of King Howard, look. That's been put up there to, to remember him, because this was his church. Okay, guys, we've finished the walk. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, thanks a lot for coming. It's been really good. Nice to have you here today. A bit hot, but cooler than it has been. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, it's been an interesting little uh, walk, I think. And different from our usual ones where we're in the forest and looking at trees and so on. Uh, a bit chitting. And on that somber note, <laughs> <laughs> I shall wrap it up. Thank you. So, thank you. All thank together. you, John. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, let's get connected. Very good. Speak here as well from Find Your Active and our voluntary action people all for coming today. No, and thank you. The, the thank you. Yeah, you're representing the sunflowers. Well, I'm just supposed to well, and men shed. Come out. Come men shed. Oh, hey, good. Thank you again. <laughs>